If you're trying to lose some weight as an entrepreneur, should you be using a low-fat diet or low-carb diet? We're going to get to the end of this endless debate in today's video. But before we do that, click the subscribe button below because on this channel, I'm going to share with you how to build a seven-figure body so you can actually have an awesome-looking, high-performing, healthy, and strong body to go along with your business success. What's up everybody? This is Coach Amir from 7figurebody.com and in today's video I'm going to tackle the you know, never ending debate of you know, the two big camps which are low fat diets or low carb diets. As you probably know, this industry, the fitness and weight loss industry basically goes through cycles and cycles that sometimes last a couple of years, sometimes a decade or more, but essentially we have three big macronutrients, protein, fats, carbs. And as you know, protein is kind of, you know, even the dumbest of them all. Uh, kind of doesn't have much against protein because it's the most important one. Um, so it really, what it leaves to play with, it's basically carbs or fats. So the whole industry, marketers, copywriters, and, you know, everybody else, snake oil salesmen, everybody else, they have to make it, basically make a stand between is fat bad and we should eat a ton of carbs or are carbs bad and we should be eating a ton of fats. By the way, if you've been, you know, for any length of time in this industry, you know, anything for like 10, 20 years, you will notice that back in the 80s, they figured out that, you know, fats are horrible for you. They kill you, give you cancer, you know, give you heart attacks and all this. So let's load up on carbs. And by the way, we started doing that back in the 80s and then everybody started getting even more and more and more overweight. And they were like, okay, wait, 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 wait. This obviously didn't work. Everybody got fatter. So like early 2000s, we're like, hey, it seems like carbs are actually bad. They're terrible for you. Let's load up on fats. And that's really when, you know, the, the keto diets and all of these basically low carb, you know, paleo, South Beach diet, uh, all of these diets that you probably heard or maybe done or tried some of these are basically low carb diets. So the idea behind them is carbs are bad. We need to lower the carbs. Now, of course, if you look at the common pattern from it all, you'll realize that what are they really trying to do? They're trying to manipulate you to eat, consume fewer calories while telling you that calories don't matter. Okay. So carb zealots, low carb zealots will say carbs are terrible. You don't have to think about calories at all. Just lower your carbs, load up on fats. On the other hand, you have the, you know, the other camp that's like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, carbs are bad, you know, fats are good and blah, blah, blah. So it's at the end of the day, it really comes down to w which camp you want to be at. But what are they all doing? Whether you go on a low carb diet or a low fat diet, what's going to probably get happen? You're going to lower your total calorie intake. And therein lies the answer to what you should be doing for weight loss. You need to control your calories. Now, you already know that being on this channel, you already know I've talked about it a hundred times. Calories are king. And as long as your total calories are in check and your protein is sufficient, the ratio of your fats and carbs that you consume is completely irrelevant for your results. You're going to have the exact same identical results if you have two diets with total calories and total protein the same, but different ratios of fats and carbs. It can be all fats, all carbs, or anything in between. The weight loss results are going to be identical simply because calories are king. Okay, we get it. Now, if you ask yourself, okay, but where should I start? Well, like, where should you start from? Should you maybe cut your carbs a little? Should you uh, cut your fats a little? Well, here's the answer. Uh, remember this, we all overeat. That's why we gain weight. Okay, now when they actually do epidemiological studies, which is basically large scale studies of, you know, uh, dozens of thousands of people, and they kind of observe what these people are doing. We know that everybody has insufficient protein, so they don't eat enough protein. On the other hand, they eat too much of both fats and carbs. So the answer to whether you should have a low fat or low carb diet is neither. You actually need to probably lower a bit both of these. Lower them compared to what you're eating now because very likely you're overeating in both. Now, of course, that's kind of for the average person out there because that's what all the studies do. They take, let's say, 100 people or 1,000 people or 10 or whatever it is, and they draw out averages. So, of course, there are outliers, right? So, on each end, top probably 5 10% is, you know, outliers on a positive, outliers on a, on a negative, and like 80 90% are average, right? Now, if you happen to be one of these, like, either, you know, on any end of the extremes, you might actually be eating a ton of carbs and a very low, carb, very low fat diet. In that case, obviously you need to monitor the carbs and vice versa. 
Somebody's like, eh, I don't really like them carbs. I just have my vegetables and fruit. I don't really love the carby stuff, but I do love a lot of nuts, a lot of oils, a lot of fatty fish, a lot of fatty meats. In that case, it's very likely you're gonna have to obviously, you know, just control the amount of fats. Now, a couple of logistical things. Remember, more processed the food is, the easier it is to overeat simply because it's more palatable. So for example, it's not the same whether you eat too much carbs from drinking a gallon of soda per day versus you have a little bit too much carbs because you simply love to, I don't know, let's say you love to eat rice. So you end up eating a little bit too much rice. That's kind of easy to control. On the other hand, you know, if you are drinking a gallon of soda, we have a big problem because it's like whatever it is, 2000 calories or something of pure sugar with no nutritional value, no fiber, nothing. So, and also one other thing, uh, remember that liquid calories, especially sugar water, which is basically all soda, it's just sugar and water, is not really well compensated by the brain. So what does that mean? If you normally have, let's say, you know, breakfast of 600 calories and lunch of 600 or something like that, and all of a sudden one day you have a little bit less in that breakfast, maybe, or you skip breakfast, or you have a little bit something different compared to what you normally eat, so it ends up being 300 calorie breakfast instead of 600. Guess what? The brain senses that, and since the body and brain are always trying to keep that homeostasis, basically keep you where you are, but you'd be overweight, overweight or not, it's trying to keep you where exactly where you are. So, because the body doesn't like change, it's just like kind of, you know, like routine and everything to stay the same. So your brain's gonna be like, okay, you're used to eating six ish hundred calories for breakfast, now you had 300. Guess what? I'm gonna make you hungrier later in the day so you actually add those extra calories that you missed in the breakfast maybe you're going to be a bit hungrier and add them for lunch and dinner and at the end your brain is like awesome i got another day without changing anything that's great well this compensation mechanism does not work well at all for liquid calories especially sugar and water for example soda so you can easily have like 2000 calories of soda throughout the day your brain is not going to really sense or register that that well and it's not going to compensate by making you less hungry later in the day this is the reason why most people who drink a lot of sodas and you know all these drinks that have calories um, are basically it's just sugar and water uh, are very overweight because this is by far the fastest easiest you know way to gain a lot of body fat is to just drink soda and of course vice versa one of the best easiest you know most efficient most effective ways to lose a lot of body fat is just to get rid of soda and again you don't have to get rid of it completely if you can have you know one whatever instead of three um you know cans or whatever it is great you're going to cut calories a lot now of course if it's like an addiction thing meaning i don't mean you're like addicted to it but if you have this like for example when i play chess i'm like i'm just going to play one or two you know chess matches and end up you know playing it for three hours if that's the case like my only option for handling that is just don't play chess at all like there's no other way if you are you know of that same mindset then it's probably best to just cut it completely okay so remember that's you know when it comes to logistics of carb intake on the other hand logistics of fat intake are that Fats are very caloric, they're nine calories per gram. So cutting fats a little bit, meaning a little bit of grams of fats off of your daily intake actually ends up being a lot of calories because it's more than double the calories of carbs. So remember, 100 grams of carbohydrates is 400 calories. 100 grams of fats is 900 calories. So it's much easier, you know, if you will, at least theoretically, to cut your calories by cutting a little bit of fats. Now, of course, it doesn't mean let's all just cut fats because another thing is low fat diet is actually proven to be very, very negatively affecting your production of sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone for women, testosterone for men. So low fat diet is a terrible idea. Now, of course, what constitutes a low fat diet? If at least 20 to 25% of your total calories are from fat, that's kind of considered low-ish, but I would definitely not go lower than that. Uh, even, you know, more than that, like 30-ish percent is probably, uh, you know, going to be better for most people simply because they're also very satiating. Uh, they're going to make you, you know, or, or uh, you know, you're going to feel full and satiated, so you're not going to be eating as much. On the other hand, carbs, unlike what most people think, are also very satiating. If you're if we're talking about normal, you know, like non-sugar, <laughs> you know, types of uh, carbs. So, for example, if you're eating rice, or vegetables, they're very satiating because they have a lot of volume, fiber, yes, they have carbs, but they also have water, volume, uh, meaning uh, fiber, very voluminous foods. On the other hand, you know, sugar soda, 
it's basically the worst thing you can have, basically like sugar water or soda. So remember at the end of the day, no, you don't need to have a low carb or a low fat diet. You probably just need to lower both a little bit. But again, it all comes down to you know, what your total allotment of calories for the day is and then what the appropriate amount of protein is. That's really what matters most. The ratio of your fats and carbs that you fill the rest of your calories with, totally irrelevant. Uh, for weight loss at least, for health. Again, low fat diet is really not the best. Uh, and you know, generally speaking, when you look at the conglomerate of all the research done on this, low carb diet for general population out there have a little bit more uh, success rates than a low fat diet. And you know, again, there's like so many confounding factors here that can influence this in a, you know, either way. So I wouldn't really look at that as something that you should do. So for example, you know, 25 studies say that low carb diet is a bit better than low fat diet, but 15 studies say that low fat diet is better. That really doesn't mean anything for you. What, what is the most important for you is to figure out what you actually prefer. I talked about in, the, in another video, you know, how to come up with the best diet. You can click here to check that. What's the best diet for you? You can check that video and click on it to uh, see the like kind of more in depth of what that actually means. But it, what it comes down to is your personal preferences, what your body needs based on your current, you know, where you are with weight, body fat percentage, activity level, blah, blah, and what your goals are. And of course, within that, there's your lifestyle and preferences and habits, which you actually like. I always say, you know, the best program in the world sucks if you give it to a client that cannot execute on it. So let's say, you know, you're working from, for example, nine to five, and I'm like, well, research says that 11 a.m. you should be working out is the best time. It doesn't matter if it's the best time to work out at 11 a.m. If you can't work out at that time, that information is useless for us. Just like if I say, hey, low fat carbs, low fat diets are the best, or low carb diets are the best, it doesn't matter if you really love eating carbs, and I tell you, well, low carb diet is amazing, you're just gonna fail on that diet eventually, or you're gonna stick to it and constantly be deprived, and that's no way to go through life. So basically remember, your preference and where you start from, your goals and everything else that is unique to you is what really determines whether you should have a bit more carbs or a bit more fats, as long as total calories and protein are in check, you're gonna get uh, the fat loss and weight loss results that you want. So I hope this help was helpful, guys. Uh, if it did, Please click the like button below. Also hit that notification bell. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel because here is where you're going to learn the absolute no BS information on how to lose weight and get completely shredded and actually make that enjoyable and sustainable. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next time.